Hi, Richard Kossoff with Guaranteed Rate. This is going to be one of my better videos. I can feel it. The reason being, we're going to talk about buying versus renting. I know the arguments. People say, why should I own something? Renting is so much less money. I pay $1,200, $1,300 a month. Why do I want to commit to something? Well, to be honest with you, it, it's a good question. And first of all, yeah, before you buy something, you should feel good about your job and know that it's going to last a while. You should hopefully have some savings in the bank in case the job doesn't last a while so that you can make those payments with the bigger payments coming up with a, a mortgage. And then third, you want to feel settled for where you're living. You want to know if this is the area or what area you want to live in for I think it should be like five years because there are costs and there are higher expenses with mortgages and we want to make sure you make money in this process. So yeah, buy versus rent. If you're unsettled, if you're not sure where you're going to live, yeah, renting is fine. But if you want to gain wealth, once you're feeling settled, the only way I know to do it is through real estate and how so many more people have done it is through buying, owning, and selling real estate. All right, let's talk about this. First, of course, right? Um, I still think buying is the American dream. There's pride of ownership. You get to say, I own something, um, something that's actually going up in value and not going down in value. I always love people that are renting. They go out and buy a, a BMW with an $800 a month payment. You look good, but are you going to be able to save for your future and make some big decisions for the future that require financial prowess? So, so I would say to you, own something, then buy the car. Okay, let's talk about um, inflation. That's a big piece to this. The reason why owning has so much value is because property values go up in value. Now, why do they go up in value? Well, there's a couple of reasons, but one of the big ones is, is inflation. It's always costing more to buy something in the future than it is that you bought today. When I bought this house, for instance, let's say I bought it for around $400,000. I didn't add a second story to it. Why is it worth so much more today? It's worth more today because of inflation. Dollars are cheaper. It takes more dollars to buy the same product. If a loaf of bread costs $3, a year later it costs $4, you've experienced inflation. Everybody knows it. If inflation is too high, it makes the government upset because people will say, hey, let's go to the polls and let's throw out all the politicians because our prices have gotten out of hand. Okay? Um, but the government does have a target of 2% inflation, which means that they're telling you that we're going to make our best effort to make money grow, so to speak, or the, the number of dollars grow 2% a year in terms of what it costs to buy something. Um, so if you bought a house for $100,000, they're saying to you next year it'll be $102,000. If you bought something for $400,000, two fours are eight, they're going to say in one year that house is going to go up to 408000 And so it goes. So you can see where this, this wealth from inflation starts to come in. And then also when you make a mortgage payment, you're not just paying interest on the loan, which does go to the bank. You're paying principal as well. You're actually paying the loan down. I've heard people argue and say, oh, it's ridiculous. All you do is pay interest for the first couple of years. That's not true. In the example I'm going to show you, um, right off the start, you pay probably close to $500 a month into this house savings account, I like to call it. You're actually paying your, your principal loan down by about $500 a month in the, in the following example. But it doesn't matter the loan size. From day one, from, from mortgage payment one, you're paying down your principal balance. And as such, you are gaining wealth from the... Okay, first of all, we should define you know equity. Equity, right, uh, is, the, is the value of your property less your loan amount. And that equity grows from inflation because the value is going up and because you're paying down the principal of the loan every month. And that's your house savings account, so to speak. That's your equity. Let's talk about the thing that many of you may not know. I'm sure a lot of you do. And that's going to be uh, about the tax benefits. For those of you that already understand the tax benefits of owning a property, okay, this will be a refresher. For those of you that don't know about the tax benefits, this should be mind expanding. All right, here we go. 
If you buy something for $600,000 and you put 5% down, that's what? $30,000, so you're going to carry a mortgage of $570,000. $570,000 at a 7% interest rate on a 30-year fixed, I'm kind of using today's dollars, today's interest rates, five seventy dollars at 7% is a payment of $37.92 a month. By the way, if you take that same $570,000 loan and look at what just 7% interest is, that comes out to $33.25 a month. $33.25 a month. So the difference between $33.25 at 7% interest only versus the $37.92 of your actual mortgage payment, the difference is $467 a month. So that's what I was referring to just a second ago, that from payment one, you are paying down your principal mortgage by $467 a month. And think of that as your house savings account. Okay. Now, here's the tax benefit. Follow this, please. Okay, the mortgage payment we said was $37.92 a month, okay? The IRS says you can write the interest off of your gross income. We said the interest portion of that is actually 577% is really $39,900. Remember that number, $39,900. You can reduce your gross income in, on your W-2 by $39,900. Then you can also write off property taxes. That's a big deal. So in California, the property tax is one and a quarter percent. If you take $600,000 at one and a quarter percent, that is an annual tax bill of $7,500. So you can write off the taxes, you can write off the interest. So when you add those two numbers together, you get a total write off of $39,900 in interest. 7,500 in taxes, that comes out to $47,400. What does that mean? It means if you make an income, a W-2 of 100,000 for conversation's sake, your tax bracket in the IRS with no write-offs is 100,000 times a tax bracket of 24%. You owe 100,000 times 0.24, you owe $24,000 a year to the IRS. That's no fun. What happens if you have a mortgage? Well, you take that same 100000 you reduce it by that $47,000 we talked about. Okay, now you only owe $52,600 in terms of what the IRS sees as your income. The IRS allows you to reduce your income for tax purposes by the interest and the, ta and the property taxes. So 100000 less the... 47,000. So they see your income now as $52,600. And get this, because your income is now under a, a category of 89,000, you also reduce your, your IRS tax rate. Your rate goes down from 24% down to 22%. Anyway, they would take 22% of 52,600. Now you only owe for IRS taxes, income taxes, $11,572. You went from a tax bill of not owning anything and renting of $24,000 a year to a new tax bill by owning something of only $11,572 a year. You just gave yourself a $12,428 raise. That's over $1,000 a month. You just, you just, experience more income in your own paycheck. How do you do that? You go to your HR, you tell them you want to refill out or complete your, I think it's called a W-4 form, haven't looked at it in a while. Your W-4 form is they're going to increase, they'll increase your, uh, your, your deductibles, your dependents, really. You don't have to have dependents to increase your dependents for an IRS W-4 form. So you increase it from zero dependents up to talk to your CPA, two, three, four dependents. And now every time you get a paycheck, you get in each paycheck less taxes being withheld and therefore more of your income you get to own and keep. Can't be better than that. So here you are. It's the American dream. You're feeling good about where you're living. You own something. It's going up in value because of inflation, because you're increasing your house savings account by making a payment every month, which is paying down principal. 
and you get this tax benefit you never had before, which means you get to actually experience more of your paycheck. I can't think of any better reasons to own versus rent once you're comfortable and settled with your current situation. This is Richard Kossoff with Guarantee Rate. We'd love to work with you. Find me at richard.kossoff at rate.com. Talk to you again next week.